Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily. I love colorful makeup and colorful language. And I also love fun, new makeup, and I love duping the vibes. I love being inspired by new releases, by digging into my collection, inspired to dig into my collection. I am not a not shopping channel. I am not a buy less channel. I am a I cannot afford everything channel. Uh, and so today I wanted to go into another edition of duping the vibes in a format that feels a little different for me. Hannah Louise Poston is the uh, kind of creator of the phrase duping the vibes and she's been doing it for years now and I've definitely done a fair amount of duping the vibes videos during my time on YouTube. I think I actually have a playlist of that so I will link that in the cards. The concept is basically taking the energy of a new release and translating it into something that you would actually use and work with. And Hannah recently did, weird, weird thing, I usually say HLP. HLP recently did a video duping the vibes where she was breaking down like her first reaction if she bought a palette, how she would actually play with that palette. And that, that created a light bulb moment for me. This is a duping the vibe session with the Belle Butte Bar Strange and Unusual Palette. Belle Butte Bar is an indie brand that I've never shot from before, but they've had some interesting looking palettes come onto the market, I feel like in the last couple months. And this 15 pan palette is just it tickles my spooky Halloween Beetlejuice fancies. It's also $70. And I really started thinking about if I had that palette in front of me, what would I actually do with it? And y'all, it was a journey. How we're doing this is I'm going to build an eye look based on what I think I would dip into first, what is the most inspiring. I'm gonna give you details about the palette as we go and just talk about it because the other reason why I felt especially inspired to do something on this palette is that it is in like pre-order round two now. It sold out very quickly and um, I have no like hate against the brand or the palette or the pre-order or anything, but I just wanted to kind of think about if the process of getting the palette is too much of a challenge for me personally, how would I actually use it if it was in front of me? So if you like colorful makeup, if you like deepening the vibes, or you just like cute fat babes or bitches with lots of opinions, I hope you will subscribe and let's jump in to this duping the vibe session. The Strange and Unusual palette, the Beetlejuice inspired 15 pan palette from Belle Butte Bar has four multi-chromes in it, one iridescent multi-chrome, four duo chromes, and then six mattes, five mattes and one matte with a shimmer. So if that palette was in front of me right now, the first things I would be drawn to would be the green mattes. There is a swampy green matte and more of a neon matte. And I feel like when it, actually, when I actually started looking at the matte selection, I was unexpectedly less enchanted. There is a matte white, which truly doesn't interest me. There is a matte black, which I might use. I'll say I would use it more now than maybe ever in my past makeup, you know, journey. There is a matte red, which okay. And this, this was the discovery for me. I'm, I'm not a huge warm yellow, not yellow, orange, red lover. And when I started breaking down this palette, I realized that, uh, there's, there's a lot of that in there. Then we go into, there's a matte purple, but it looks, it looks fairly warm toned for some of the, 
the purples in the palette. And the one thing about the neon green is that some of the swatches make it look a lot more like a cool toned neon green than a warm toned one. What I think we had going on in the palette is something more like this, which is a neon green from Terra Moons. The, the first thing I thought of is that neons are tricky to work with and they're not really a blending color. And then the other neon or the other green was more of a swampy green. So I pulled out Dirty Martini from Dandelion. So honestly, if this was my first time trying to go into this palette, because I know neons are tricky, I actually want to try that first. I know you're like, that seems like backwards logic. That's just kind of how I am. And part of me actually trying to blend out a neon is to just kind of see what happens and then see what will happen if I put that darker tone on top. Because I, I personally want like a step stone and if it had been like a yellow even, because then the yellow could have gone with the green and the red, I actually could see that being more useful. I'm not gonna say that neons are gonna be a great blending choice for all skin tones, definitely not, but I think we can do something with it. So the neon green in the palette is called Recently Deceased, and then this swampy green is called Betelgeuse, like in the, uh, is that like German spelling? So the plummy purple, uh, that's how I'm describing it, the plummy purple matte is also named Beetlejuice, but it's the more Americanized spelling. And for me personally, I felt like the closest purple matte that I had tonally and um, depth wise is, is Undone from Lethal Cosmetics. It was from the uh, Dusk palette. Because I think this could go bad, but I want to see what we can do, I'm going to try this because black deepening shades don't totally excite me personally. Like they're nice to have, but uh, if you have seen my graphic designer Q or graphic liner, I keep saying graphic designer, my graphic liner Q&A, I go into a whole thing about colors and color theory and the color wheel. And green and, and um, purple are pretty opposite on the color wheel. So blending them together can become very swampy. And sometimes in a way that you, that does not look like this is kind of cool. I'm kind of digging it. Um, but I also feel like I'm being very, very, very careful with how much I'm applying and how I'm blending. And I don't necessarily feel like I would be this successful with other matte formulas. The Lethal Matte Formula, for me, blends like a dream and blends in the way that I really enjoy applying eyeshadow. Um, but oh, there's a lot of matte formulas that don't apply this way. Or for me, don't apply or blend this way. But this is letting me, you know, get that winged out shape that I really like, that winged out depth. And that's cool. Uh, I did apply base earlier and um, I have a ton of fallout already so we'll be figuring out how to fix that but that's like a, the older formula of Dandelion Cosmetics mattes are very kick up -y, but I believe from what I've seen from other people's purchases like in the very recent past they have improved upon that. I'm actually going to grab just a little bit of the black matte. This is just from Lethal Cosmetics and just deepen it up. Oh, the color that is like, the color that I immediately was like, oh my God, give it to me now, give it to me was Afterlife. And the funny thing is, I just got my Lethal Cosmetics order in where I picked up almost all of their more recent multi-chromes and Singularity from Lethal Cosmetics is giving me the afterlife 
vibes. I'm gonna do most of that on, like, I'm, I guess you're kind of getting a, a bit of a cut crease. For me personally, I don't do traditional cut creases because I don't feel like I need to do them traditionally um, because of my eye shape. So I'm using the Pixie Epoxy, which is like a glitter primer and a brush that can really cut the crease without cutting the crease. It's also the Refer 21. I'm also doing some intensely purple inner corner. So this palette has a couple of purples, purple shimmers to go along with Afterlife. We have Bio Exorcist, we have Delia, and we have Tombstone. When I actually see the purples together, it actually confused me a little bit because Delia is more cool toned and Bio Exorcist is more of like a warm purple and it shifts to that orange gold. And then Tombstone is definitely more of like a gray purple. But then you have this like hot kind of like lavender to, um, to teal, I guess. So I picked out uh, Rosette from Cleona Cosmetics, which is a purple to blue to orange magenta shifting shade. And I am not afraid of shimmers in the crease and like blending out shimmers. So I think I'm actually gonna use this to deepen up the that where kind of like create a blend where the matte and the shimmers meet and i like a kind of like fingertip shaped brush that's not too big for this kind of work because it applies it very nicely but it can also blend and i'm going to use a brush that doesn't have any of the green on it to go in with more of the matte purple okay i am going to <laughs> <laughs> clean all of this up. Uh, yeah, we're gonna figure out, we're gonna do some cleanup and then I'll be back. Luckily, the cleanup wasn't too bad. I was able to just, I mean, I had to, I had to create more of a harsh line at the top of my bronzer contour, but it's fine because I also wanted to do something that I love to do with palette. The Iridescent multi Carm in this palette looks delicious. It's called Sandworm. And while Sandworm seem to have a white, like the pan looks more white than this color, I really feel like Parsec, which is one of the other multi Carms I got from Lethal Cosmetics, shifty wise reminds me of, of, of Sandworm. Um, and obviously these are new to my collection. So I think I'm feeling especially attached to be like, yes, that was a good decision, but like, these were a good decision. So I'm gonna use this as a, as a highlighter. It's gonna be intense. I can already feel it. So this kind of move is not for the faint of heart, but I feel like if you're watching my channel, you're probably not the faint of heart. Oh, absolutely fuck yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, I love it, love it, I love it. And like, um, Sandworm is giving me like pink, green, turquoise feelings, and I feel like this is achieving that as well. Maybe closer to the pink and green, but whatever. But like, this is how I use palettes. This is how I use palettes. And honestly, if there had been like a lighter purpley matte, I could even see playing with that as blush, but that wasn't in there. So we have this eye. It's not my favorite, if I'm being honest. It's, it's not my favorite. Uh, I think that the trying to blend over the neon is not the best decision, but that's what I would be doing in this palette. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more of the neon and kind of redo the little no shape I had created. I'm going in with a small, generally clean brush and picking up some of the purple for the under eye. I have this purple shimmer from Touch of Glam. It's just like a duochrome. It's not, I don't think, an exact like same vibe as Delia, but I'm gonna add it. 
And the point of what I'm doing is I kind of want to draw the purple down to where the green neon is. So I think I'm getting to that point of like, this is this is close to like what I would go for with this palette. The one thing that I'm missing, there is a green to gold multi-chrome in this palette called uh, Lost Souls. And I have Lethal Cosmetics Patina, which is just one of the most beautiful, stunning green to gold multi-chromes. And uh, I want to use that. So if you haven't been here before, I'm a person that really likes doing weird and fun brows and really playing with like stuff up all like from my li just using using my face as a canvas. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, I think, a little Dura line and mix up a little liner and do something with uh, with patina. My patina is a little broken up, so don't judge her. But this is patina. Just fucking beautiful. Spoiler alert. Most of this was out of focus or out of frame. So we have finished this look. I added the green to gold multi-chrome liner above and below, and I did a little concealer touch up. I really still think that the palette from Belle Beat Bar is quite pretty, but when I really started looking at the palette, not just in sense of is this a good color story, but is this a good color story for me? My feelings changed quite a lot and it was a bit of a roller coaster. And like there are some very pretty colors in that palette, very beautiful swatches. But when I was looking at it as a whole package and really starting to think about what kind of looks would I do with this, I did feel like I could already spot some limitations. I am sure if I actually went through all of the palettes I owned that I would be able to also play this game and spot major limitations. So I'm not saying this or doing this kind of video to be like, oh, I'm a perfect consumer and I don't bring anything into my apartment, into my home that is not absolutely curated to a T. Like, I, I am a, a a dupe buyer when it comes to like shiny, shifty, beautiful shadows. If I could own every version of like a green to purple multi-chrome in all different scopes and ranges, I probably would. But it really, this format really changed how I was looking at this product and how much I was lusting after it. And I know when watching uh, Hannah's video, it changed her criticism of the palette into kind of understanding it more or appreciating it more, but not to the point where she wanted to buy it. And so it was just, it's just an interesting kind of brain activity to, to go in and really say, okay, if I have this in my hands right now, what looks would I make with it? And for me as a palette buyer, I really want the palettes to feel all in one because I do love my single eyeshadows and I really reach for them over most of the palettes that I own. So when I like a palette, when I want it, I want it to really work with a lot of looks and, and kind of like as standalone as it can. And once I started really taking a look at those 15 pans, I realized there are some looks I can do standalone with that palette, but also there are other things where I'm like, I think I would want like a non-neon 
lighter green or a yellow, a lavender or another tone of a purple matte to go with some of the other purples in it. I don't want the white matte. Um, the red and the orange family, it's pretty and it pops against the other things but it doesn't feel as exciting for me. There's just a lot about the palette that I still admire, but I don't crave it and lust it in the same way. I would love to hear your thoughts about this format, about this palette, about just, does this feel like something interesting? Have you been enjoying it? Do you have any questions about anything I put on my face or anything I talked about or anything on, you know, I always say this, but the comments are there to have conversations. And if you do have this palette and you have thoughts, raves, rants, whatever, I would love to hear about them also. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to subscribe. My Patreon and my YouTube channel membership are another great way to support me. I so appreciate all my patrons and my members and I really appreciate y'all's, you know, I don't know, I feel like especially in the last six months, life has just been a, a roller coaster. Uh, I'm also streaming on Twitch these days sometimes. So I'm going to link that in the description box now if you feel like seeing me play some cozy, queer, maybe chaotic games. Uh, I'm going to dabble in maybe talking about or doing a little makeup live over there. We'll see. We'll see. We're figuring it out. So come along the ride with me. I would love that. Thank you so much for spending a bit of your day with me. Most importantly, don't forget to take care of yourself better today than you did yesterday because you're worth it. Bye friends.